Hi, this is Peter Jackson, the director of They Shall Not Grow Old. Jabez Olsen and I really, the first, the first thing we did, which was, when I say the first thing we did, it was about the first year on the project was we had to look at 100 hours of footage. We had to listen to like 600 hours of audio recordings. You first of all have to look at it very closely and analyze what all the problems are. And the majority of the problems are actually caused by age. Again, with the duplication that's happened, it's lost sharpness. And so that has to be rectified. And then the speed obviously is one of the key things too. everything from 10 frames a second, 12, often 13, 14 was quite common. We had to know what these speeds were without any paperwork or any reference. And we were able to get the image looking pretty great. We were able to take the dark stuff and pull the original image out from the black and getting it looking pretty good and the bright stuff, we were able to print it right down and get that looking good too. So that in a way was one of the easier things that we did because it's something where it's a regular film technique and that yielded some amazing results. There's the technical aspects of, you know, just simply turning a black and white film into colour, which is, you just have to cut it around the various shapes, frame by frame, and that's the uniform. But then on, in, within that uniform, you've got badges, buttons, various things that are also different colours. And the more amount of layers of this detail that you can add to the colour, the better it gets, so the more time spent, the better. So fortunately, down here in New Zealand, I've got a fairly large collection of original uniforms and equipment from the war. They've got cockades on there. Have, have you guys had, had a look at, look at the colour of the... Um because the colors of the uniforms of the First World War, even though it's the army and everything's sort of pretty much the same, you'd think the colorization would be sort of simple. But unfortunately, the British uniforms being khaki and the German uniforms being field gray, both of those colors are very weird, strange colors. They're amalgams of different colors, like khaki is yellow, brown, green, in different amounts. And it was a struggle at times to actually get the khaki the right colour or the field grey the right colour. It was a lot harder than, than I thought it would be, but, um, you know, it had to be right because when it was wrong, it was wrong. As well as having the, the veterans um, telling us their stories on the soundtrack, we also wanted to put sound with the actual footage itself that you hear in, in the movie. That is the sound of real shells flying a few feet just above so, you know, we, we, the artillery sounds to me were very important because that is a very dominant sound that these soldiers experience. One shot that was a really difficult one to do, which was very difficult to lip read, was an officer giving a lecture to his troops the day before they go into battle. Looked at all the paperwork that's in the archive and we came across a piece of paper with what's essentially a pep talk on it. It's just about 12 lines long, and it's, you know, the sort of pep talk you would give to your soldiers the day before they go into battles. What I did is I recorded on my iPhone, I just read it out two or three times at different speeds, and I gave that to Jabez, who was able to take my recording and just massage it around. And really the question was, is this what the guy's actually saying? And we were able to get my voice matching reasonably well to, to have enough confidence to say, yes, this is, this is absolutely what, what he's saying. If every man goes into the fight determined to get through whatever the local difficulties may be, I am confident that the brigade will distinguish... It's, it's interesting because that's quite a well-known shot. It's used in a lot of the documentaries, and I must have seen that shot for 30 or 40 years in a multitude of docos of this guy standing there silently talking, and now I, you know, now, now I know what, he, what, he, what he's actually saying. It became apparent to us as we went further into post-production that we needed some sort of a music track. Well, I didn't really want a, a musical soundtrack in the sense of what you would have in a, a normal feature film because I didn't want to make it feel too slick and modern. And whilst we didn't want to use songs over the film, you know, they took elements of those tunes and, and also whistling was a big thing. Soldiers, they would whistle. So we used the motif of whistling and the little bits of mood music, little bits of tension music for the battle, just enough. What I hope this film does, and I, I don't really have any message in the film. I like to think of it as a film made by a non-historian for non-historians. 